Noxifarm is an Australian clinical stage drug company holding what it sees as the next breakthrough drug in oncology. This is not a drug intended for a few people with a certain type of cancer, but rather a drug that Noxifarm sees being used in most cancer patients because of a unique and much needed way of working. If Noxifarm can match this ambition, its market value is potentially worth billions of dollars. And joining me to discuss this opportunity is its CEO and Managing Director, Dr. Graham Kelly. Graham, welcome to TCN TV. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Noxifarm has just announced a key breakthrough discovery independently validating the DART program. What does the DART program involve and what does this discovery entail? Okay, well, the, the DART program uh, involves using our drug Vionda with a very small dose of radiotherapy. And uh, normally when you deliver radiotherapy, uh, it's, it's meant to shrink one or two tumours. But when we add Vionda to that, what we see is not just one or two tumours shrinking, but tumours all over the body uh, shrinking. And uh, we've uh, wondered just how that is happening, why that is happening. And uh, uh, an important breakthrough discovery uh, announced very recently, uh, just a matter of a, a few weeks ago, by uh, Wild Cornell University in New York, finally provides an explanation for why we're seeing this very dramatic uh, uh, outcome. So we're excited by that. Wonderful. So Noxifarm describes Vionda as a first-in-class drug that works by inhibiting something called S1P in cancer cells. Can you outline what this is and why it is so important to cancer development and also what are the implications of inhibiting it? Uh, sure. S1P is a pretty important uh, little chemical for all cells because it's basically uh, the uh, major chemical that keeps all cells alive and functioning. And, uh, and tumour cells make more of it than they should. And that this is why tumour cells grow and uh, can ignore the rest of the body. Um, and so uh, our drug, Beyonder, actually knocks out S1P. So by taking away this key driver of survival within a cell, we're removing the cancer cell's ability to basically to survive and to function. So that means that we switch off a whole lot of things in the cancer cell. And uh, one of these things happens to be the, uh, um, uh, the mechanism that is behind this discovery that's been made by Cornell University. It's a, it's a, a particular repair process. And, uh, and if you switch that off, uh, then what you're able to do is to uh, apply a little bit of radiotherapy to one tumor in the body and then have, have that uh, send signals all over the body where all the other tumors now, now shrink. That's called an abscopal response. That's what we're seeing in a lot of our patients. Uh, we wondered why. We're excited by the fact we were seeing it, but we still wondered why. And now Cornell have provided the, the answer for why we're seeing that. Okay, now you have also just announced a new clinical study called Ionic. What's the aim of this study? Well, Ionic is using much the same uh, basic uh, mechanism, which is switching off this S1P or sphingosine 1-phosphate uh, factor in the cancer cell. But, and, and one of the other consequences of that is that, uh, is that we get uh, an immune effect going all over the body, a bit, bit like an abscopal response. But in this case, what we're looking to do is to, is to restore immune function in all the tumors around the body. And when you do that, uh, and you mix it with uh, some of the uh, common uh, drugs in use at the moment called uh, uh, immune checkpoint inhibiting drugs, we see, uh, well, we hope we're gonna see a significant uh, response to those drugs. So the, the underlying mechanism is the same, uh, but we're using it in two quite different ways. Okay, now Bristol Myers Squibb has uh, recently joined Noxifarm in the Ionic study. What is the potential benefit for them in a successful outcome in this study? Well, uh, the, the summary is that uh, they'll sell more drugs and, uh, and, and help more people. At the moment, their drug, along with um, uh, one other drug uh, uh, made by another large uh, US drug firm, 
uh, between them uh, are selling about $30 billion, their US dollars every year of these two drugs. So they are having a major impact on, on cancer therapy. The problem is that they're only working in roughly 5%. So that's one in 20 cancer patients. So what uh, BMS uh, is, is hoping that, uh, that can happen or come out of this collaboration with us is that, uh, is that uh, more patients will respond. So what we're trying to do is to use our drug Beyonder to, uh, to reduce this resistance that they see to this class of drug. So more people responding, that means better outcomes. The class of drugs like Optivo, known as checkpoint inhibitors, sold about 30 billion US dollars last year. And many analysts are predicting that the true potential for these drugs is at least around 150 billion US dollars. Can you explain why they say that? Well, it's, a, it's simply a matter of mathematics. If, uh, if, 30, if uh, they're generating $30 billion a year in sales and the, and the drugs are only working in one in 20 patients, then uh, you know, let, let's, let's be conservative and say that we can uh, get the drug to work in, let's say, uh, four out of 10 patients. So there's $120 billion, just, in, uh, just the numbers just uh, uh, go up. So um, no one talks about what might happen if you can get it to work in 90 or 100% of patients because that, the numbers just become so large. But it's purely a, and simply a matter of getting more uh, types of tumours to respond and more patients within each tumour type to respond. There is also scope for beyond a base treatment for septic shock, a condition associated with viral and bacterial infections, including COVID-19. How is this progressing? It's, it's going very well. I mean, this really is, a, is, is very much an add-on uh, opportunity for us. This, this would never be a major uh, focus, uh, but uh, we, were, we were persuaded by some uh, uh, very eminent uh, researchers that the, the, the way our drug worked uh, as an anti-cancer drug potentially could mean it could help people with COVID-19 disease, uh, particularly uh, from getting something called septic shock which is uh, the way that most people who die from uh, COVID-19 uh, disease, that's, that's the way they die. So that's progressing. That's in Europe. Uh, and uh, that'll be in about 40 patients. And we look forward to reporting the outcome in early January. Now, drug companies Pfizer and BioNTech announced their vaccine candidate was more than 90% effective in preventing COVID-19 just this month. How does this news affect your strategy uh, with uh, COVID-19 patients? Well, uh, let's all hope that this, the vaccine uh, is as good as, as people are hoping it will be. Um, but, uh, and there are some big buts in this, we do not know at the moment, and I don't think anyone knows, just how effective and how durable the, uh, the effectiveness might be of, these, of this vaccine. I, I'd remind people that we have effective vaccines against influenza virus. And yet last year, about three and a half thousand people died in Australia from septic shock from influenza. So just simply having an effective vaccine doesn't mean you're not going to get deaths. And, uh, and our drug uh, beyond, if it does work uh, against septic shock in COVID-19 patients, certainly has the potential to work in septic shock across other, other forms of or other causes of uh, what uh, causes of septic shock. Uh, septic shock, uh, in fact, uh, is one of the major killers of people in the world. Uh, about 10 million people die each year. That's 20% of all human deaths globally uh, are thought to be due to septic shock. This is not uh, suddenly a COVID-19 issue. What COVID-19 has done is to bring it, uh, is to put it onto the world stage and, and bring it to people's attention but it is a major problem that needs fixing. Finally, Graham, many investors are reactive and not proactive. What updates are you expecting to release on the progress of Beyond and DART-related studies over the coming six to 12 months? Well, there's, there's, uh, there's four studies that will be uh, generating a fair bit of news flow over the next 12 months. Uh, 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 two of them are yet to start. Uh, that is uh, our Ionic and our DART 2 study. They'll be starting uh, in the next uh, two to three months. 
And we would we'd expect um, interim reports coming out of those two studies on a fairly regular basis, every, every three to four months, for example, as we go through those studies. There's, uh, there's two other studies that will be reported on. One is uh, the so-called Lupin study, uh, which involves using uh, our drug Beyonder with um, a drug um, owned by Novartis, again, in prostate cancer, cell, uh, prostate cancer patients. That, uh, that's a 56-man study that's been fully recruited and, uh, and treated, and we're now, we're now waiting for the uh, final results from that trial. So we know that there's going to be a, a presentation on our Lupin study, that's the Novartis study, in uh, early February, and then the other studies will be reported on in, as we go along on a, a rolling basis. Graham, thank you for the update on Noxa Farm and all the best uh, for your studies. Thanks, Lelda. And thank you for watching. Now, if you like what you see, please be sure to like and share the video, subscribe to TCN TV or drop us a comment. Tell us who you would like to see next and what you would like me to ask them. Or if you're an investor, send us an email so we can keep you in the loop with the latest ideas to empower. Thank you.